Here, using Keycrock, I explain how to make the logic or serialization scalable and how to make the architecture scalable and ensure availability. I hope that this session will help developers implement authorization. First of all, please let me introduce myself. My name is Yoshiki Tabata, and I'm a senior OSS, sorry, senior OSS consultant at Hitachi. And I have be become a senior CNCF ambassador in this form. I mainly work as a specialist in API authorization. For example, I consult for API management infrastructure and authentication and authorization systems in the financial, public, social, and industrial fields. And I'm also a contributor to OSS related to authentication, authorization, and API management. For example, I contribute to Keycrock, an identity and access management OSS, and Syscale, an API management OSS. For these OSS, I mainly develop features based on feedback from actual projects like the above fields. And other activities, I spoke at events such as API Days, API Specifications Conference, or Security Workshop, and so on. And I wrote some books and web articles about identity and access management. So let's get started. These are today's contents. First, I describe the importance of authorization. Then I describe what scalable authorization is. After that, I introduce how to implement scalable authorization with Keycrock. Then finally, I introduce advanced challenges with OPA and CockroachDB. First, I describe the importance of authorization. First, what is authorization? Authorization is a process of verifying that a requested action or service is approved for a specific entity. The important point is authorization is different from authentication. Authentication is the process of verifying an entity's identity. And authenticated doesn't mean authorized to access all resources. For example, a general user should not be authorized to access administrator features even if they were authenticated. And authentication is not always required for access, accessing resources. For example, there are public resources that can be accessed without authentication. In this way, it is important to clearly distinguish between authentication and authorization. Today, I will dive into authorization. Authorization is becoming more and more important to security considerations. For example, in OWASP's top 10 API security risks, three of the top five security risks include the word authorization. Number one, broken object level authorization. Number three, broken object property level authorization. And number five, broken function level authorization. I briefly explain each security risks. Regarding number one, broken object level authorization. The, this risk allows access to objects not permitted. For example, user 101 can get user 102's resources. The resource server must not allow user 101 to obtain user 102's resources. Regarding number three, broken object property level authorization, this risk allows access to object properties not permitted. For example, a general user 101 can change its rank to gold rank. The resource server must not allow a general user to change sensitive object property like rank. And regarding number five, broken function level authorization, this risk allows access to prohibited functions. For example, a general user 101 can call administrator functions. The resource server must not allow a general user to call administrator functions. Like this, 
there are various levels of authorization, all of which are considered high security risks, so you can see how important authorization is. Next, I describe what scalable authorization is. The simplest authorization implementation is implementing it in application logic. For example, when you'd like a user to access the protected resource if they are an administrator, you can implement it like this. If user dot is admin, then user can access the protected resources. This is a common implementation that we often see, and there's nothing wrong with implementing authorization this way. However, as the service grows, the authorization logic quickly gets difficult. For example, you may need to allow to access the protected resource not only for administrators, but also for full-time workers or the resource management group members. In this case, the number of conditions in the if statement increases dramatically. Also, in many cases, Duplicate implementations may be required in multiple places in the application logic or for multiple services. This is not a scalable authorization implementation. Therefore, some kind of ingenuity is required to make authorization implementation scalable. There is a common approach to ensure scalability by managing roles in a hierarchical structure. There are two layers, the user layers and the resource layer. The user layer's roles are assigned to users, and the resource layer's roles are assigned to resources. For example, user 101 is a director and a full-time worker and belongs to the administration department. In this case, user 101 will have the administrator role of the resource service. In this case, uh, you only need to implement authorization like this. If user dot has role resource service dot admin, then user can access the protected resource. Even if the authorization condition changes later, the change will be observed by the role hierarchy. As a result, this reduce, reduces the impact on application logic. In other words, even if you may need to change the conditions of who can access a protected resource, you only need to change the relationship between the user layer's roles and the resource layer's role, not, not to change the conditions of this if statement. This means authorization logic were able to be separated from application logic. It seems like high scalability. However, as the service grows, the number of roles increases and there is a risk of a role explosion. When role explosions occur, system performance is severely degraded. Furthermore, from another point of view, to authorize users by these roles, multiple services may need to store duplicate role data. In the end, this is still low scalability and not a scalable authorization implementation. So far, to summarize what the ideal scalable authorization is, to use the same application logic for multiple services and to eliminate duplicate data as much as possible. In this example, all services uses the same authorization logic, which uses URIs specifying resources and HTTP methods specifying what you do for the resources. If what you need to implement for authorization is only this, this must be a scalable authorization. To realize this, you need two things, to separate authorization from application logic and to centralize authorization data. 
Next, I introduce how to implement the ideal scalable authorization with Keycloak. First, how to separate authorization from application logic. To separate authorization from application logic, there are two ways, implementing authorization logic from scratch or using an external authorization service. There are pros and cons. Regarding the from scratch way, if simple purpose, from scratch is better. However, it is difficult to achieve fine-grained authorization. Regarding the external service way, many services allow to definition of general purpose policies to achieve fine-grained authorization. However, the more general purpose policy definitions are made possible, the higher the learning costs for defining policy tend to be. Here, I will introduce Keycloak's authorization service as a just right purpose authorization service. The meaning of just right purpose is that Keycloak's authorization service is based on ABAC, attribute based access control architecture, and acts as, acts as PDP, policy definition point. This can achieve fine grained authorization like the external service way. But by using Keycloak, we can configure authorization using GUI, not needing learning costs. Here, I briefly introduce Keycloak. Keycloak is Identity and Access Management OSS, and Keycloak provides OS 2.0 authorization server features and single sign-on features. Keycloak became a CNC incubating project this April. Here I introduce four main major features. First, Keycloak supports standards such as OS 2.0, OpenID Connect, and SAML, and, and so on. And second, Keycloak can connect to existing user stores, LDAP, and Active Directory servers. Third, Keycloak can log in with social networks, GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Finally, Keycloak provides a policy-based authorization service. I describe Keycloak's authorization service in a little bit of detail. By using Keycloak's authorization service, we can centralize authorization data to Keycloak and eliminate the storage of duplicate authorization data in multiple services. And Keycloak enables fine-grained authorization by resource, scope, policy, and permission management. This management can be done by using Keycloak GUI. Resource is a protected resource that needs to be authorized. Scope is an action that can be performed on resources. Policy is a condition that must be satisfied to access or perform operations. Permission is coupling the policy with the protected resources and scopes. Keycloak can act as PDP and make an authorization decision using these four types of definitions. This example shows how to achieve scalable authorization with Keycloak's authorization service. Delegating authorization to Keycloak and getting an authorization decision previously required multiple API requests. But now you can get an authorization decision with just one API request. This is enhanced in Keycloak 22 and I committed to this. When delegating authorization, you request the Keycloak's token endpoint with an access token that represents the user. And specify UMA ticket to grant type, decision to response mode, URI, and scope to permission. Then Keycloak returns an authorization decision just results true or false. In this example, using the HTTP method as scope and the URI as a resource. 
This means authorization logic was able to be separated from application logic. And when the number of services increases, we only need to write this same logic and then achieve the same kind of authorization. So it must be a scalable authorization. Next, I focus on this access token. This is the overall flow of both authorization and authentication by using Keycrock. According to OS 2.0, the standard protocol for API authorization, when a client requests API, the client commonly adds an access token to the API request for authentication. So a service delegates authorization with the access token, and Keycrock evaluates policies using the access token. So this access token plays an important role. Fortunately, Keycrock can also act as an OS 2.0 authorization server. Keycrock can issue the access token following the OS 2.0 authorization code grant. I briefly describe this overall flow. When a user uses a client, the client makes an authorization request. Afterward, Keycrock authenticates and authorizes the user, then makes an authorization response. Afterward, clients request tokens and Keycrock issue tokens. Then the client requests an API of the service with the access token. The service delegates authorization with the access token and gets an authorization decision from Keycrock. If the authorization succeeds, the service returns a response. I mapped the standard specifications to this overall flow. This token assurance is following the RFC 6749 OS 2.0 authorization code grant. And API request is following the RFC 6750 OS 2.0 authenticated request. And authorization delegation is following ABAC. By using Keycrock in this way, you can achieve both API authorization and authentication in a standards compliant and secure way. For your reference, I introduced another standard specification called UMA, User Managed Access 2.0 Grant. By following the UMA 2.0 grant, resource owners can define permissions for their resources to third parties. So more flexible authorization is possible with various use cases. For example, a use case in which a resource owner wants to publish their resources to some third parties, third party clients. Another example is a use case in which resource owner wants to change authorization policy dyna dynamically depends on their circumstances. Keycrook is a UMA 2.0 compliant authorization server that provides most UMA capabilities. Finally, I introduce advanced challenges with OPA and CockroachDB. As I said before, to realize scalable authorization, you need to centralize authorization data. However, there is room for consideration of which is better centralized authorization or distributed authorization. Distributed authorization means authorization at the edge of each service. Here, I focus on the disadvantages of centralized authorization and tackle reducing the disadvantages. Here, four perspectives are listed. Scalability, performance, availability, and consistency. Regarding the scalability, centralized authorization is better, as I introduced in previous slides. This is because multiple services do not need to store duplicate authorization data and authorization logic. Regarding performance, distributed authorization is better because services only need to access local authorization logic. On the other hand, in centralized authorization, services need to access the centralized authorization service for every API request. So this communication might have a negative impact on performance. 
Regarding availability, distributed authorization is better because even if some services go down, the rest services go well using their local authorization logic. On the, on the other hand, in centralized authorization, when the centralized authorization services goes down, all services deny every, every API request. Regarding consistency, centralized authorization is better. This is because only the authorization service makes authorization decisions, so consistency in authorization decisions between services is guaranteed. This is a common comparison between centralized authorization and distributed authorization. However, when performing decentralized authorization with Keycrock, this comparison is somewhat different. This is because Keycrock is a member of the CNCF family and can be deployed in the same Kubernetes cluster as a service. The performance delays due to communication are reduced. Also, regarding availability, by scaling Keycrock instances and making it a high availability configuration, we can reduce the risk of SPOF, single point of failure. Although only with Keycrock, we have already reduced these disadvantages. In the next slides, I introduce other solutions. First, tackle the performance challenge. As I said, Kickrock is in the CNSC family and can be built in local Kubernetes. Communication to the centralized authorization service less has negative impact. However, when performance requirements are too severe not to ignore the communication cost to Keycrock, there is another solution combined with OPA. As you may know, OPA, Open Policy Agent, is a general purpose policy engine using the policy language called Rego. There are mainly two options combined with OPA. Option one uses OPA as just a cache. The sidecar OPA just, cast, just by caching authorization decision from Keycrock, and we can expect performance improvement. Of course, there is a trade-off with consistency in authorization decisions. In this option, a service delegates authorization via OPA, and OPA caches an authorization decision from Keycrock. Until the cache expires, the service only needs to access local OPA. Option two uses OPA as PDP, policy definition point, as shown below figure. We move the PDP functions to OPA and dedicate Keycrock to PAP, policy administration point. Keycrock just by notifying events such as policy changes. Of course, OPA requires storing duplicate authorization information. In this option, a service delegates authorization to OPA, and then OPA makes an authorization decision by checking the stored authorization data. By combining, combining Keycrock with OPA in these ways, we can solve the performance challenge. Next, tackle the availability challenge. Combined with OPA, as mentioned before, Keycrock resolved the availability challenge to some extent. This is because even if some services go down, the rest services go well using their local OPA. Here I would like to consider not only local failures, but also wide area failures. For mission critical services that cannot stop, combined with CockroachDB, Keycrock can withstand regional failures and operate in much, broad, much crowd environments. As you know, Keycrock uh, CockroachDB is a new SQL DB and has much region capabilities. As a note, Keycrock plans to support CockroachDB but doesn't officially support it yet. By combine, combining with CockroachDB, even in the event of regional failures or large-scale cloud failures, services can go well by changing the connection destination. In the case of CockroachDB, by 
adoption and active active strategy, there is no need to no need for kind of failover over processing on the DB side in the event of a failure. So downtime can be minimized. In this way, by combining key clock with cockroach DB, we can solve the availability challenge. Finally, this is a summary of this session. First, authorization is becoming more and more important to security consideration. This is clear from OWASP top 10 API security risks that three of the top five security risks include authorization. Second, to achieve scalable authorization, separating authorization from application logic and centralized authorization data are other keywords. And I introduced how to achieve scalable authorization with KeyClock. Finally, regarding the comparison between centralized authorization and distributed authorization, I described the disadvantages of centralized authorization compared to distributed authorization. Then I described that KeyClock can reduce these disadvantages. Furthermore, I described that combined with OPA, we can solve the performance challenge, and combined with CockroachDB, we can solve the availability challenge. These are trademarks. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Does anyone have any question? Is there a mic, mic, so? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, can, can you hear me? OK. okay. Do you have a proof of concept of, or, or some kind of demo of the scalable Auth C uh, system that you presented? Which, which thread do you mention? Is it that with CocoGB or uh, OPA? Further back. This slide. This one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there some kind of demo example that, that you could you could provide us? Uh, your question is, uh, is there any demo for authorization service, right? Uh, yeah, uh, not, not, right, not right now, just perhaps we could talk uh, afterwards mm -hmm. um, if you have some, some kind of example okay, uh, to show. Yeah, in this session, I, uh, don't, uh, pre I didn't prepare the demo, but uh, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, show some demo uh, in maybe Hitachi booth or Kikrok booth in this uh, event. So mm -hmm. if you uh, visit the booth, uh, we can, we may <laughs> uh, able to uh, show demo. Thank you. Hey, I have a question too about high availability with Keycloak. Uh, right now, Keycloak supports HA with distributed caching using InfiniSpan. So I'm wondering uh, why would you recommend waiting to use CockroachDB instead of using distributed caching at the moment since it's already supported? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you for question. And uh, Keycloak. Uh, uh, you mentioned, as you mentioned, that uses the infinite span at the uh, cluster environment, cluster configuration. And, uh, but uh, uh, that the uh, cache, cache layers uh, configuration, and uh, you may uh, need to uh, consider the more uh, uh, devil, devil layers uh, configuration. Then uh, we need to configure, uh, we need to uh, consider the, uh, this kind of approach. And uh, this is uh, not only uh, focused on the local failures, but also wide area failures. So uh, maybe the one, one option for disaster recovery scenario. So uh, I 
introduce this kind of configuration. Thank you.